You might have come across these badges in code repositories. They are supposed to show how much code is covered by the set of tests. Most of the time, the coverage is given as a percentage, but a percentage of what exactly? Hi and welcome to Premature Abstraction. Today we dive into different kinds of measuring test coverage. A naive approach is to just look at how many lines have been executed during the test run. But this gets problematic very quickly. What exactly counts as a line? Are empty lines allowed? What about empty statements? And can I just make my code longer with some fancy formatting to boost my coverage? Turns out using those tricks we could get arbitrarily high coverage with just one test. But that's not telling us much, is it? So let's shine some light on this confusion. First things first. Let's clear up some questions. White space should definitely not count for coverage. And the same goes for empty statements. In fact, let's say we have the following code. From this, we can build the so-called control flow graph. We create a node for each statement and connect them via edges. If statements act as branches, and a loop is just like an if statement, but with an edge back to the condition. Now, notice that no matter what, these nodes are always executed together. So we can combine them into one. By the way, at this point, we can say goodbye to our code lengthening trick, as this would be eliminated here anyway. After abstracting all distractions away, we can reason about different coverages a lot better. Let's start with statement coverage. It basically tells us how many statements our test set actually executes, compared to the total number of statements or nodes in our graph. Sounds straightforward, right? Well, here's the thing. If we have just one test that runs through all the statements at least once, it might seem like we're good to go. That's what most coverage tools tell us anyway. But there's a big issue here. We did not check every branch. For example, this edge here was completely untouched. In fact, by disregarding this edge in our test set, we are essentially saying that the other path is not important and could therefore be discarded entirely without being able to detect this during testing. So if a bug is there, we won't find it. See the problem? Okay then, our next criterion at the so-called branch coverage, where we measure how many branches or edges in our graph were visited. Alongside our previous test case, we need another one to cover the additional branch. So overall, two test cases are sufficient for 100% coverage. But even with both tests, we might still miss out on important scenarios. Take loops, for example. In our whole test set, it does not matter how often the loop runs, and this may make a crucial difference. Now let's approach this issue from the other side. The obvious thing is to just take every possible path, so all paths where the loop is not executed, all paths where the loop is executed once, and so on. This is called path coverage. Well, for tiny programs without loops, it might be achievable but toss in a loop or two, and it gets out of hand quickly. Imagine having a loop that could run 99 times. You'd need a whopping 100 test cases just to cover all the potential paths. And if there's a second loop in the mix, you're already looking at 10,000 test cases. So let's make a trade-off. In the so-called k-structured path coverage, we count all paths, where each loop is executed up to k times. So we need a test with zero loop executions, one with one execution, one with two executions, and so forth. But this is still comparably much work for little gain. It is, for example, quite unlikely that executing the loop 41 or 42 times makes a difference in their impact on assessing the code quality. Therefore, one special case is often used, which is the k-structured path coverage with k set to 2. This is then called boundary interior coverage. Concretely, this means that we need all paths with no loop executions and all paths where the loop is executed exactly once. This is called testing the boundary of the loop, and then all paths where the loop is executed at least twice, called testing the interior of the loop. Under this criterion, we need at least six tests to reach 100% coverage for our example. Okay, let's wrap this up. We had path coverage, where all possible paths need to be considered. K-structured path coverage where every loop must be executed up to k times. A special case called boundary interior coverage, 
demanding 0, 1, and 2 loop executions. Branch coverage, where it is sufficient to execute each branch of the code. And last statement coverage, where only every statement must be visited. You can see that these measures get more general from bottom to top. And indeed, each criterion implies the ones below it. So if you fulfill, for example, 100% boundary interior coverage, you will also have 100% branch and statement coverage. As I already mentioned, most coverage analysis tools will only count statement coverage. But now you know that having 100% statement coverage is not really saying anything on how well your code is tested. Therefore, some standards require at least boundary interior coverage, for example, in the aviation or automotive industries. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you very much for watching.